I'm sweaty. This was a lot of work. This was, let's see if I can count guitars before the battery dies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 guitars. Oh my gosh, I have a problem. That's a lot of guitars. Ah! I want you to build a collection of guitars that is more exciting than any video game could ever be. I've done it, I want you to do it. I have a course down in the description down below that will teach you how to build a guitar collection like what I've done, but now it is time. Let's dig in, let's go through every single guitar that I have. Rapid fire. Number one, my Pano Octave Mandolin. I love this instrument. It is a wild card. It's crazy, it's a groundbreaker. It forces me to do things I've never done before. This thing is awesome. It's an octave down from a regular mandolin. Next up is my 1971 Guild D40. This is a newer version of a guitar. My first vintage guitar was a Guild D40. It was the guitar that helped me fall madly in love with acoustic guitars, especially vintage American-made guitars. This thing is awesome, and it came from my friend Aaron. Aaron, thank you for finding this guitar. Thank you for working a deal with me, and uh, it sounds excellent. It has a tiny little pencil neck. Continuing guitars made by friends that I am so freaking proud to own. This is made by Steve Danes in San Diego. This is a boxwood guitar. I love this guitar and no, it's not comfortable to play, but it is freaking cool. Uh, so this is a torrified red spruce top and then sinker mahogany back and sides. It sounds amazing. Has an inch and 11 sixteenths nut width. That's pretty much the only thing I would change. I also added a pick guard to it, but here it is. This is a full-on handmade guitar from Ben Padgett. This is a Padgett Model 1. This is my daily driver. You don't see this much on my channel because I'm playing this all the time. When I play music out in church, when I play music out pretty much anywhere, this is the guitar that I'm taking with me. It has a K and K Pure Mini. Uh, this is an excellent guitar. It's so light and it just sounds amazing. <laughs> Is my Showalter OM. I just finished building this. Uh, this was a huge collaboration between myself and Showalter Guitars just up the road here, just north of Harrisonburg. And oh no, I've given away a cardinal direction of this studio. I always point out which way people are. That way's north. Figure out the rest. Okay, this is an Osage Orange back and side Sycamore OM, Osage Orange Bridge. This is a 25 and a half inch scale length. This is an excellent guitar made by dear friends. This is the first acoustic guitar I've made my own and mistakes were made, but it is excellent. I've played this guitar so much over the last month. This has been with me in Nashville. Squire Tom DeLong. This was my first electric guitar. It's not technically true. This is my second electric guitar, technically. But I mowed every yard in East Rockingham County to buy this. And since then, I've changed every piece, part, bit, bob on it. Most recently, I put in a Mythos treble bleed, a variable treble bleed. It's amazing. They're super cool. I'll put a link in the description down below. My friend Zach makes those. Check them out. This is make this is that's the mod that makes a guitar with one pickup really helpful. Gives you good clarity and treble all the way down as you turn the volume down. Another guitar that is so exciting and so nostalgic to me is this. This is my Fender American Professional 2 Stratocaster uh, in, what's this color called? Miami Blue uh, with a rosewood neck. I got this. This was my first brand collaboration with any guitar brand, and it feels so incredibly nostalgic. Also, it sounds amazing.
Every guitar collection has to have a theme or a thread, a way that it makes sense all the way through, and you will see this thread running through my guitar collection, which is guitars made by friends. This is my Rude Revelator made by Evan Dowie, the unbelievably talented guitar builder in New Orleans. Um, his mom took a yoga class with my aunt, and so it worked out that we became friends. But this is my favorite of like humbucker, funky guitars, telecut bridge. I play this one a lot. things in my guitar collection is this. This headless monstrosity is my Huston Dalton TDM. I can't talk a whole lot about this guitar, but thanks a lot FedEx and thanks a lot uh, guy who bought the guitar and will take no responsibility for damaging my guitar. Um, this one's so sad, but this is not the end of the story on this one. This is my daily driver and it will be back and uh, can't wait. So Huston Dalton TDM from 2009. My next and most excellent guitar. This was my first, my first, my first Furk that I ever owned. This is a Furk Yellow Deluxe. Now I also have a guitar. I have a Furk Yellow Deluxe. Now I have a Furk Vintage 2 OM that you've seen. It's back in Nashville. It will be here one day. But this is my first love with Furk. And this is an excellent cedar top, East Indian Rosewood back and sides. This is just a finger style machine. Just bright, fun, spunky, wonderful. My most iconic electric guitar is this Pink Paisley Tele, which I'll make a video about probably this next week. Telecasters are the perfect guitar. If you don't agree, I'll fight you. I mean, for me, an electric guitar, they do every single thing that I want a badass electric guitar to do. They can do stuff like this. <laughs> you have to have is the groundbreaker a kind of guitar that just forces you into a weird place a different place a different tonality so add more strings tune it super low bada bing bada boom you got a baritone now this is the guild bt258 deluxe e right bt258 e deluxe so this has a fishman pickup it sounds okay um, but it is an eight string guitar it's a baritone and then you have octaves on the d and the a a and the d whatever um, here it is here's how it sounds There's nothing cooler than having a B minor here. Relatively new addition, but absolutely monstrously cool is the Wright Lou 3 number 36. It's not an advanced jumbo, it's not a J35, it's not a J45. I get it, you've got opinions, but this guitar is absolutely amazing. Maple, this thing has a force field of low end around it. Does that mandolin stress you out up there? It stresses me out. 
This is my 1967 Martin D35 with Brazilian rosewood. This one needs some TLC. Doesn't sound good. Listen to this. Jarring to the senses. It has such a low saddle, needs an neck reset. This one's going with me to Nashville for Nathan Wright to reset. This is a Rich Allen Telecaster. This is an absolutely monstrous guitar, and um, it is the lightest and best sounding Telecaster I've ever had. Now, listen, this basically has the exact same uh, hardware and pickups as this, but one is Super 60s, one is Super 50s. <laughs> It's awesome. It's perfect. This is a Rich Allen. A uh, whole bunch of specs on this. Amazing guitar made by a dear friend in Florida. My last guitar is a strange one to end on and it will not sound good. I guarantee this guitar is not going to be in very good tune. Oh my goodness. Not even close. This is a 1970s Goya. This is a C17. A G... A GG17. I know very little about this guitar. Uh, my friend Jack gave me this guitar, but there's a lot of, there, I need to learn a lot about this guitar. I wanted a good classical to have around. Um, I don't know if this is good, but it is a classical. I didn't talk about my amplifiers. I have a 68 Deluxe Reverb Drip Edge, which is actually not mine and it is for sale. It's amazing. Behind that, I have a Crate GFX 212. Relive your glory days. That's my amp from when I was in high school. Super freaking loud, rattles my teeth. Um, I also have a Tone Master Deluxe excellent guitar amp. I use that every single day. Uh, you heard it in here. It's going through my pedal board straight into my Universal Audio Apollo. Behind that, I have a Guild 66J, a 5E3 clone built into a really cool cab. I also have a 47 Valco back here, sold at Montgomery Ward. It's amazing. And that's it. That is every single guitar that I have. Is that too many guitars? 17 guitars? How many guitars do you have? How do you collect guitars? And what can people, if they just looked at your guitars, what would they see that you care about, that you value, that you want to fill the world with? For me, I care about music and I care about friends. And you see how many of these guitars were made by freaking amazing friends. Thank you, every single one of you. Thank you to my patrons. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship. Music